So welcome to AI Insights with John Rose. Today we're going to talk about agents. Uh, now let me let me start a little broader. For years, when we thought about how to define what is an enterprise, what is a company, there's been a lot of debate. But one of the things that I think has emerged over the last decade is the real essence of any enterprise are two things. The first is its proprietary data. The fact that you have information that your competitors don't have gives you an advantage and actually defines a lot of what you have as long-term value. And the second asset that makes an enterprise an, enter an enterprise is the unique skills within your enterprise. You just know how to do things better than your competitors. And so independent of AI, if that's an enterprise, then what's going on as we start to apply AI to the enterprise? And what's been fascinating is the first wave of generative AI, uh, chatbots, rag systems, they were really mostly about unlocking the proprietary data of the enterprise. Think about it. When you put a rag-based chatbot in front of your support information, what happened is not new support information, but you can unlock it and iterate on it and expose it in ways that you've never been able to do before. And that's fantastic. But as we start talking about something called agents, and I'll define them a little more clearly in a second, what we have to realize is they're not actually about just unlocking the proprietary data. They're going after the other part that makes an enterprise an enterprise, the unique skills. And so the purpose of an AI agent when properly implemented, is actually to unlock those skills, to, to create a digital equivalent of the, 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 the unique skills that are your enterprise. So let's give it a definition. I'll just try my best. There's probably lots of them out there. But for the sake of argument, an AI agent is a software system that uses artificial intelligence to make autonomous decisions and take actions to achieve a set of objectives, meaning it's a piece of software driven by AI that actually does work. It accomplishes a task. It's not a tool, and in many cases, it's actually better viewed as the user of tools as opposed to the tool itself. Now, double-clicking on this, well, what is inside of these agents? What, how, do, how should we think about characterizing them and also knowing what isn't an agent? Because that term is wildly overused today. So a true autonomous agent in the AI world, first and foremost, is autonomous, meaning it can operate without human intervention at different levels of autonomy. You give it direction, it just goes. The second is it's capable of something called function serving, which means that it can interface with other systems. It's not a self-contained piece of software. It's designed in a way that when it needs to do a task, it might talk to a different system over an API or even control a machine, potentially. The third is that it is goal-directed, meaning you do not tell an agent how to do something. You tell it what to do. You give it a direction. I would like you to organize all of the information known about uh, CNC machines and develop competency in it, and then you let it go. You still have to tell it what to do, but how to do it is a function of the autonomy within the agentic system. The fourth is it is capable of reasoning and decision making. And this is a big difference from first generation chatbots where the data was fairly static. What they knew, they knew. And if they didn't know it, it didn't exist. In an agentic system, we've introduced chain of thought and reasoning technologies which allow them to take a set of data and then interpret it and think through to some degree derivatives of it and effectively create new skills and new understandings of the data. You know, it's not to anthropomorphize them, they're not doing it as humans do it, but they're doing it similar to how our brain works in which given a task and a set of information, they can create connections between that data which ultimately looks like an entirely new set of capabilities. The next area is they are perceptive. AI agents aren't just driven by uh, a chatbot interface. Yes, many of them take a prompt to start working, but part of their activity may be to observe cameras or sensors or to interact with the real world because they're designed not only to reach out into the real world to invoke actions, but they can actually interpret the real world and include that in the tasks that you're giving them. And then finally, uh, they are capable of, quote unquote, learning and adaptation, meaning that the, the difference, the biggest difference between an agent and a chatbot is that the chatbot is generally powered by a set of static information in a vector database that was defined once and used as long as it exists. In an agentic system, the underlying data structure is not a vector database. It, in many cases, is something called a knowledge graph, which is a collection of information and an understanding of the connections between all of that information which means that as they start doing work, as they start working through tasks that you give them, 
they are not just interpreting static information, they're actually learning from it, creating connections from it, much like the human brain does. The idea is that the knowledge graph under an agentic system actually fills itself in. It creates connective tissue and it ultimately allows it to know that instead of the raw data, they can understand the patterns within the data. Now, that's just a deeply technical way to describe learning and adaptation, but they can do that and legacy systems and first generation AI systems didn't. Now, because the term is so badly overused and mis misused, what I just described is a real autonomous agent. Things that aren't autonomous agents. First of all, an autonomous agent is not a large language model by itself. Agents use large language models and small language models and all kinds of tools to ultimately accomplish their tasks. And foundationally, in most agentic systems, are some large language models, but the system is much more than that. The second is they are not a basic chatbot or AI assistant. In many cases, our first generation of chatbots, we called them agents. We have a support agent, a help agent, a sales agent. They really weren't agents as I'm talking about now. They were just a chatbot. There was a static set of data. The generative environment was able to convert that data into much more usable experiences. But the bottom line is they had a well-defined set of functionality based on a well-defined data set, and they operated against just that characteristic. An agent is very different, as we just talked about. The third area is that they are not a simple rules-based system. You know, some people confuse the evolution of agents with previous technologies that use those terms, things like robotics process automation, which is a fantastic technology a long time ago, but all it was was really a rules-based system that defined a set of behaviors and kind of automated a process, but it was not a system anywhere near the capabilities of an autonomous agent, so it's important to distinguish those two, even though the work done in robotic process automation led us to many of the ideas that are now modern agents. They are not the same thing. And then finally, an autonomous agent is not just an automation tool. An automation tool is when you take a well-defined set of tasks and you organize them and hand them to a machine to be done in a very prescriptive way. As we already said, autonomous agents don't work that way. You don't actually tell them how to do the task unless you specify it in the prompt, but even there, the way that they figure out how to do it, the choices they make are the agent's responsibility, not the human's responsibility. And that's a gigantic difference between these two, are, these two approaches. So today, we have an overused term, uh, agent, but before it, we had things like digital assistants, which were chatbots with a human face on them. We had chatbots, which were data published through a rag into a, 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 a text-based interface that could express that data. And even before that, we had robotics process automation, and these are all great tools, but now we're entering the era of autonomous agents, which are nothing like them. They are designed to operate as an autonomous entity. They are able to interact with the real world. They are able to perceive the real world. They are able to evolve their data sets to understand and develop new skills. But ultimately, the interesting thing, the one thing all of these technologies share is that there is still a human being involved telling them what needs to be done and defining what good is. It's just the degree of engagement humans have. In fact, sometimes when we talk about autonomous agents, the biggest shift is that all the technologies before it had the human being in the loop. You were deeply involved in defining how work was going to be done. With an autonomous agent, you are now on the loop, which means you define the outcome and the intent, but you have delegated to the AI system the figuring out of exactly how they should prosecute that particular task. That's a gigantic shift forward. Uh, and quite frankly, that's why we're pretty bullish on this idea that autonomous agents are going to be one of the biggest tools that we have in front of us because it's not just going to unlock our data, it's going to digitize our skills. Now, where are we today? Hopefully you're excited about agents like I am. We built our first autonomous agents over a year ago. These are very real. However, they are very early. Today, even though there's lots of noise about autonomous agents, the only practical place that you can deploy and use an autonomous agent is in a constrained, kind of single domain, isolated system. Uh, the reason for that is this is very new technology, and the orchestration of it, the framework it needs to operate on, even working out how to make it work is a fairly complex task. And so the first generation of autonomous agents that are emerging, you will notice are captive within a particular product, or particular walled garden, a particular system or vendor. There is nothing wrong with that. They add value by doing that, but the full potential of agents is much bigger because the real challenge that we're trying to work through as an industry, and I, I just spent the last couple of weeks back and forth in Silicon Valley working with a lot of our technology partners to go try to solve these problems, which we will, is interworking. 
because the real value of autonomous agents is not them in isolation. It's when they start to work together. Whether it's an ensemble of agents working inside of your company, so you have different agents with different skills that can take on even more complex tasks, and we've been able to demonstrate that, you will need orchestration frameworks. You will need life cycle management. You will need to be able to control and organize them. Most of those tools don't exist today at a mature level, but they're coming very fast. The next evolution, which is probably one of the biggest breakthroughs, is when your autonomous agents can interact with someone else's autonomous agents. Imagine a world where you know, you're no longer interacting with an analyst firm. Your agents are interacting with the analyst firm. The collective wisdom of the analyst firm is accessible to you, and you can just delegate tasks. Imagine telling an agent, hey, I'd like to understand comprehensively the current state of the storage business in the world, of what's going on in, in, in data storage. Well, you know, if I do that manually today, I have to go talk to a whole bunch of different analyst firms. If I had autonomous agents between me and them, I could just task it to an autonomous agent. It could then interwork with other agents from other entities, and collectively, they would probably be much more accurate and much faster at getting to the outcome I'm looking for. That is a hard problem to solve, because today we have no interworking standards. We don't have a clear way to authenticate agents, to authorize agents, to share knowledge graphs, to even prompt them isn't entirely clear. But again, we're seeing progress. We have protocols like MCP and the OpenAI APIs, but we have a little bit of work to do. The good news is everybody in the industry is focused on doing that work. And so my prediction is the first half of this year, Single domain, isolated autonomous agents will be kind of the thing that you see and you'll start to experiment with, and some of them will probably go into production and be very useful. As we move into the second half of the year, the big breakthrough was that we will start to define interworking standards. We will allow agents from different parts of the organization with different skills or even from different organizations to interwork, which takes us to the kind of conclusion of where are agents going. Well, to be provocative, agents are going to become the new API of business. Today, you know, our APIs at a technical level, they started out as very rudimentary things. They're just a, a, a socket that you talk to and pass data in a little protocol. Uh, Netflix did some pretty cool things of creating smart APIs where you could put some code into them. But that's about where we are today, and it's a very clunky interface. It's very manual. It really doesn't do anything. But imagine a world where instead of you having these low-level APIs, you just had your API in this case, an agent, talk to an agent at your supply chain partner or your customer. Imagine if you have a failure of a product within your environment and you have a support agent in your environment and it can talk to the Dell support agent and then collectively they can resolve the issue because they're able to think, they're able to interact, they're able to evolve. That is an incredibly powerful future that looks like it's about to happen over the next one to two years and we can already see demonstrable capabilities. So, uh, on one side, I want to get you super excited about agents. They are absolutely the second piece of the puzzle. Chatbots and RAG unlocked our proprietary data. Agents digitize our skills. Those are the two things that make up an enterprise. They're both super important. They're going to work together. On the other side, I want to set the expectations. We are very early in this process. There is a lot of noise in the system. There is a lot of confusion about what an agent is. Hopefully, we're now giving you a definition. More importantly, while aspirationally, they are the future of APIs. They are the way that we're going to interwork in the digital world, and they're going to be an incredibly important partner and component of the overall business process of every company, but we have a lot of work to do. Even though that work's going to happen quickly, be very careful about believing that the technology is fully mature before it is. It's important to pay attention to that. Actually, on this particular forum, we'll probably be talking a lot about the progress we're making on making agents work to each, with each other, to be open, to be interworking. And if we make progress on those, we just unlock more and more value. So bottom line is, look, AI is a super exciting space. We've made tremendous progress with the first generation of tools. And the second generation, which is really the autonomous agent era, is just starting to materialize. And it's incredibly important that you think through how that will impact your business, where you might apply it, because it is as powerful a tool, if not more powerful, than any of the AI tools that we've used to date. So hopefully that gives you a chance to think about agents, demystify a little bit about it, but also get excited about them. Because I guarantee you, if we get back together in, let's say, two years, I would be stunned if a very significant portion of the work in every modern enterprise is not being handled by autonomous agents working with humans to just simply make our organizations work better. All right, thanks for, thanks for that. Uh, agents, I, I made a prediction last year at the end of the year. I said, uh, agentic would be the word of the year in 2025. And when I said it, nobody knew what I was talking about and what a difference three months make. It appears that agentic is going to be the word of the year for 2025.